This is a fairly well-known map depicting the positions at about 1300 hours on July the 6th. I know that's about an hour and a half earlier than our current game time, but this is the closest thing I could find for comparison. We can see the Austrian right hand blow still pretty far advanced against the French left. With Messina's 4th Corps gathered in force, the Austrians are still presenting a pretty significant threat to the French left and rear. MacDonald making his drive against the Austrian center. And the French 3rd Corps has crossed the Rusbach, ascended to the heights, and pushing back the Austrian left very successfully. This is the 1440 turn, essentially the point where historically Charles called for a retreat. And this is probably a point where the game can, can end with the victory levels more or less determined, even though there's five turns left to play. Probably not much more in terms of victory can be gained. So we'll just go in and take a closer look at how things stand. Starting on the far east side, there are no Austrians whatsoever around the heights of Mark Graf Neusiedel. They've been completely swept away. That would be the advance guard and the fourth corps both. And the uh, French are moving, basically unopposed at this point. But it didn't come without cost. The French third corps has been really ravaged. Almost every battalion, save for maybe four or five have suffered 50% losses at this point. But they do remain intact and they're able to make some sort of pursuit. Moving our way down, we see that Bombersdorf has also been captured. The blue X there indicates that it's a victory village. The Austrians have to pick four villages to defend, essentially and Baumersdorf was one of them. So they lost that pretty early. But that's kind of a given. Now there's just barely a hint of Austrians. Some cavalry, a couple of infantry battalions, and they're just in full retreat. Now there is some artillery attempting to hold the line. And those are actually excellent for holding the line. They've caused a lot of damage. One thing is that the special rule for retreat to cross the Rusback has been really hard on the French. Essentially, if you disorder a route across the stream, you're going to take one or two casualties as you cross it. And the French lost a lot as they tried to force their way across and up this, this hillside there. So that's a very good defensive position, but it was the flank attacks that essentially undid it. Try to wend our way around to Bagram. right there and it is still occupied it is also a victory village but there's not a lot holding it you can see the continued stream of the Austrians trying to cross the stream and get away from the advancing French second and third corps and that one regiment there is from the fifth corps now, it's all likelihood that village will be captured. So I'd kind of give the French Wagram and Bombersdorf at this point. But let's continue on to the east. Notice there's this huge gap. The Austrian First Corps used to extend between Wagram and Otterclaw. And they're kind of gone. This whole area collapsed. Then it was sworn by the French cavalry. See a number of tired regiments. They've been busily pursuing routed units and essentially have broken and surrounded the Austrian First Corps. That didn't take long. It only took about mm, maybe four turns. But otherwise, there's like nothing left of the Austrians right here on this little front. So if we move further to the east, see these great big wide open spaces with nobody there. 
the first Austrian defense we see are the tattered remains of the grenadiers. Those four battalions right there are all this remaining of the two grenadier divisions and then some of the heavy cavalry here and there is all that's left of the reserve. So they fought like crazy but have been pushed back and really there's nothing left to, uh, to stop the French from moving towards their final objectives. But those objectives are so far. Five turns probably isn't going to be enough. They can, the Austrians can stymie them just long enough to keep them from getting the rest of the way. Now these squares here are the 3rd Division of the Ninth Corps, as well as the Bavarians, facing off against some Austrian cavalry on the right there. And then we're going to get back towards the French 4th Corps. 3rd Division there, moving basically unopposed except by some cavalry. And then the last actual Austrian defense. Leopoldau is the last, well, the third victory village, and the Austrian Third Corps is just hanging on. Three divisions of the French Fourth Corps are going to try to push their way into Leopoldau. Five turns, they might be able to make it. There's an equally good chance the Austrians can keep a battalion or two in the in the village. So even if we grant Leopoldau Wagram and Baumersdorf. That's three victory villages for the French. That would leave one on all likelihood still in Austrian hands. And here is that one, Gerisdorf, in the far northwest corner of the map. And it is really just out of reach. There are some remnant Austrian units that are going to try to get themselves over here and they will likely be able to occupy that village along with that one grenadier battalion and keep whatever small units are able to force their way forward by the French. I just don't think five turns is enough to get to that village and take it. Otherwise, the far right is kind of collapsed for the Austrians. Here's this mass routed units gathered in the only cover terrain they can find but they're likely to be forced out sooner than later. They've been chased by the French and the French light cavalry all the way across the map. I mean across one, two, three maps after they routed and reached a morale level. Now I have sympathy for people who think that this is ridiculous from a gameplay perspective. It is kind of tiresome. Basically, you have to roll a 65 or 66 to rally anyone. So you make a bunch of die rolls every turn and then just move them, route move them. So it's not fun. I could see the rationale of just picking them up and getting them off the board. But anyway, there they are. Not likely to ever fight again, certainly not in this battle. And that's what happened to the Austrian right. Just a huge collapse, and they were swept over by the 4th Corps. Let's take a look at the Austrian casualties. See the forces holding the left of the line behind the Rusback, Vance Guard, 2nd Corps, 4th Corps, all took staggering losses. Infantry, cavalry, and artillery, in some cases all of the artillery of the Corps, completely wiped out. Much the same for the far right hook, the 6th and 3rd Corps. Both took just huge losses in infantry. Also artillery of the 6th Corps. Essentially the 6th Corps was wiped out. The center, the 1st and the Reserve Corps, both also hit very, very hard. Massive losses of cavalry for the Reserve and almost all of the Grenadiers wiped out. So the total increment losses in infantry alone is surprising, 662. And look at the number of guns, 86 increments of artillery. Roughly speaking, those translate to far higher losses than were experienced historically. And all those losses amount to a lot of morale levels. 
I think if the game had gone one more turn to the 1500 turn, we'd see the first core on a morale level as well. But fourth and sixth to level three, the Grenadiers, both on level three, basically because they're gone. And even the advance guard up to two. So by any measure, the Austrian army has been thoroughly crushed. Now for a look at the French losses. The attack on the right, the main event, the second and third corps. See the third corps took huge losses, really the brunt of the fighting. Second corps was also similarly hit, though certainly much less. On the opposite side of the field on the left, the fourth corps engaged the whole day. It still had you know, a pretty rough time of it, but far fewer casualties than the others. There were losses in uh, cavalry and artillery were probably a little higher due to just the nature of the open fighting on that side of the field. Now the center had pretty balanced fighting across the army of Italy, the Saxon or the Bavarians and the Saxons. The Saxons actually took a pretty hard hit, but um, the bulk of the fighting was done elsewhere by the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Corps. Their late push was important, but really didn't decide the battle. And can't underestimate the amount of work that the Reserve Cavalry did. And the heavy Kursars in the center really countered the Austrian Reserve Heavy Cavalry. And the total losses are very high for the French as well. 427 increments of infantry is really much higher than the estimates for historical losses, including the, um, the, the artillery and cavalry. We see probably about double what they experienced historically. But despite those losses, the French have maintained pretty good order. They have managed to rally their battalions, so even the 3rd Corps is not on a morale level. They dip to a morale level 1 during the course of the fighting, but once they gained the heights, they really were able to recuperate and return back to level 0. No other morale levels for any other units at this point. Now the victory conditions would judge this a marginal French victory. In order to win at a higher level, they have to capture all four of the victory villages. So that behooves the Austrians to pick villages that are pretty far, far apart. So the French have to spread out and try to hit everywhere at once. But just by the looks of it, I mean, the Austrians have just been crushed. They've been swept almost completely off the heights behind the roof's back. They have taken massive, massive casualties. And there's really no organized line of defense and no organized retreat. So if the Archduke wanted to preserve the monarchy by preserving the army, uh, he didn't get that done today. There's really not much left to fight with, even by the abstraction of game standards. So there it is. A marginal French victory is in keeping with historic outcomes. It just doesn't feel quite the same because of the disparity in losses. But um, otherwise, it kind of played out mostly on the east side to history. The west side was not nearly as much. The French just were able to counter that Austrian drive much sooner, much more effectively. So. In the end, the game played a little more like Jena than I might have expected because the Austrians just couldn't, couldn't fight on the, the open spaces here very well. And the, the outcome really became kind of inevitable once the, once the attack on the French left was clearly not going to develop. Likely the French were just a little too conservative, didn't commit the guard, didn't commit 
Marmont's 11th Corps until much too late. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure they could have gotten the, the full decisive victory. They could have gotten back to Gersdorf, which is way off in the distance there. The Austrians, on the other hand, I have really no idea how to do better. I think in the end they're always going to be able to hold one of the victory villages and keep the French to a marginal victory, and that's about the best they can do. Uh, I don't know how to fight any better in the open areas, and you just can't win by holding the ground behind the Rusback.